How we doing? Mark with Workaday Custom Gun Leather again, and a follow-up to the last video where we put the cartridge loops uh, in the belt, shows you the process I do for making cartridge loops. In the meantime, we finished up the rig. We got the belt done, uh, the Ranger belt. I did the holster uh, with that Army, uh, Ruger Old Army that I borrowed from an old customer. I'm going to comp him one because I did this for a new customer. So we're going to get that taken care of. I'll do another video on the fold-over style holsters that I do for a lot of my uh, Western rigs as well. But today, I'm uh, going to see how we do the belt. We're going to kind of hammer through that a little bit, get going kind of quick on that. It's about a three-hour project, hands-on. Uh, so there's some parts that we'll skip over, speed up the film a little bit, but you'll follow along. I'll narrate and explain all that. So uh, the Ranger-style belt does have the belt side folds underneath the buckle side, and then that uh, buckle connects. Uh, over top of that kind of a standard design for a lot of western wear so hang on uh, buckle up and we'll get going if you have anything that you want to see go ahead and put that in the comments below uh, and we'll look at uh, what else we can do here on the channel to keep you going we're going to do a holster later on uh, but right now let's get through this western rig and this belt and uh, we'll see you in a little bit so here we are picking up where we left off and we have the cartridge loops in we have the belt blank cut and now we're going to start by putting the lining on that belt. So it's going to be a Western Ranger belt. So we're going to put that, uh, we're going to bond that with barge cement going down through. So I trace out the whole belt onto what is really an uncut piece of kipskin leather. It's a very thin lining leather. It's very nice uh, for going on the back of belts and the linings of other uh, projects you might have. Then put that barge cement on. I got a piece of scrap leather that I kind of use as a squeegee. I sort of squeegee that barge cement on down the uh, the length of that uh, belt on the lining. And then you're going to see later that I'm going to uh, send that over, uh, turn that over and do that on the back side of the belt. And then I'm going to mate those together. The barge cement actually adheres to itself. It doesn't uh, from one piece to the other. It adheres to the piece that you put it on. And then you got to put it on the other piece, and that barge cement is going adhe to adhere to itself uh, when you put those two pieces together. You're going to notice here in a second, when I go over those cartridge loops, I kind of work it in. I'm using the brush on this part here, and I'm sort of putting it into each one of those little nooks and crannies on the back side of those cartridge loops because I want to it, uh, get that skin to meet down in and go down in between each one of those cartridge loops and get a good strong bond and you'll really see where all of those loops are from the back side even after we get the uh, the kip skin and the lining on that so then back to squeegeeing that down the side try not to run off the edge because then it's going to make it more difficult when uh, we're edging that belt later on but kind of a tedious process. I'm actually running about four times speed uh, throughout most of this video. So just bear with us and uh, we'll get the rest of that on. Got the same cameraman I had two years ago. Uh, still haven't found a better cameraman working on that. So we're going to put that belt down and just a basic press that on get it in place, get everything set to where it's going to be, and then we're going to really get that back side uh, adhered down onto the front side of that belt. Cut that out. Now we have a lot of overrun still on that uh, lining. That little trim there is going to get, uh, most of that's going to get thrown away. If there's any big pieces at all, i got some small projects I can use that on. But... For the most part, we're done with that. And then I got this burnisher here that's really a lacing hook for baseball mitts. Um, I've had that. I've used that for a while. I got a couple of those. The handle is nice for burnishing. And then that uh, lacing hook, almost like a crochet hook on the other side, nice for pushing things down in. So now we're going to cut the belt to the final dimensions. I have some overrun on it. This is going to be... Uh, that first side closest to the belt loops is going to be the belt side and then this is going to be the buckle side 
on that. So cut those out, cut that to length, put the radiuses on those. We're going to trim those down. You'll notice that I trim that back from the edge with that, but most of that lining, we're going to leave that overrun on there until we get it stitched up. Get back up to the other side, put the radiuses on the end, trim those out, trim it down a few inches along the edge of the belt, but again, we're going to leave most of that on for now. The reason I do that, I want to let that set up and really adhere, and then it gives us more to work with when I am stitched. We're going to put our stitching lines on, get the groover out, work down around that belt. We're going to put two rows of stitch. We're going to put double stitching on this. So it'll hold that well, make that a little bit stiffer. The more lines of stitching you put on a belt or anything, the stiffer it's going to get because that stitching basically holds those two pieces together. stitching lines now we're over on to the sewing machine it's a cowboy 3200 I get asked that every now and then uh, it's a brand new cowboy I bought uh, seven eight years ago a Toledo industrial sewing machine has not let me down I've not had the first bit of problem with it a um, little bit of adjustment from time to time but runs really well so we're putting the lines in I start at the bottom of that Buscadero drop where the holster is going to be. I start at the bottom because that's going to be covered up by the holster. I'm going to make two laps around this. Gets kind of, uh, this is probably the most nerve wracking part because long straight lines, if you get off, they're easy to see. So, got to pay attention. It gets almost mesmerizing when you're running that, looking at those stitching lines, but you just got to pay attention. Uh, buckle down and get those in nice and straight so here I'm coming to the end of that first lap with a made up lock stitch where I started and then without taking up the presser foot I'm just going to skip over to the other line that I'm stitching the inside so now I'm starting on that second lap around that belt and we'll get going you see I wish it actually ran that fast. Um, at this point, I'm kind of flooring it. Uh, getting that stitching line in, come back around. There's up that second lap, and then I'm gonna stitch around the holster loop. There's a loop uh, on that drop where the holster's gonna feed in through. I'm gonna put a stitch around that too to keep that uh, stiff and maintain the integrity on that loop with the holster. That's where all the strain is going to be. You'll see that when it comes by here. You'll see in a few minutes where I punch that out and uh, get ready to take the holster on that. Finish up the uh, outside stitches, those double stitching, and then we're going to stitch around the actual holster loop here. And again, we're gonna start and end on the bottom side of that holster loop because it's gonna be covered up by the holster. Keep the other lines nice and clean. Trim those up, pull the front, uh, front thread through, trim them up, singe them so that they uh, stay flat and don't come out. The singeing kind of makes a little anchor point uh, like a nail head on the thread. Right now we're going to do a little stamping. I get out the divider, mark the edge lines with the stamping. I don't do carving. People ask me every now and then about doing carving. I don't do what's sometimes called Sheridan carving with uh, and where you see the flowers and the ivy and the leaves and all that. I have neither the talent nor the patience. Uh, to do that at this point and to feel comfortable charging people for it. The edge stamping on the other hand. Between carving and stamping, carving is more il illustrative. The stamping, just line them up and uh, put the stamping around. I got uh, those arches or 
I believe they're called scallops. I'm not sure. Somebody that does more stamping and carving than I do could tell you. Uh, but I put those curves on. They look kind of like eyelashes. I uh, put those on, and then in the in between those, I have florets that kind of tie those together. And between the two of those, um, they give it a nice, even look. Even if the stamping isn't really straight, when you put them together, they kind of straighten everything out. And you see that with those florets that I put in afterwards. The individual scallops may not look so great, but you put those florets in, and it just evens out uh, very nicely. Before they do it around the holster loop as well and uh, we're about a third of the way done with the stamping I don't charge extra for the stamping um, I think it adds enough value to it if you want the stamping I put on some guys like it to stay clean they don't want to see any fancy stamping on it that's fine I leave that off as well uh, but for what you get um, and no more than it takes me to put this stamping on I'm just as happy to add it, make you happy as the customer, make me happy making it, and uh, it just turns out really nice. And then on the other hand, the other end where it's straight, uh, I can really just kind of get going around here. You don't have to work around the cartridge loops, uh, the belt loop, the holster loop, all of that goes pretty quick. I always line it up on the end. You'll notice at the end I have one scallop going across there and then I'll put the florets on either side. And then as I'm going down the second side, I kind of line them up the second side with where they lined up on the first side so it looks balanced. Uh, and this, this turned out really nice uh, all across, both on the main portion of the belt and the uh, trouser belt or the fastening portion of the belt. Now I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take that lining off because we're getting ready to... Uh, do edging and finishing up we're kind of getting into where the belt is going to turn into the belt that we're going to end up with it's pretty close now we put the trouser belt on the front of that inch and a half belt on the front and we're going to be pretty close to done we're about halfway done now this main part the ranger belt portion of this belt is a two and a half inch belt that's pretty standard to what I use for these some guys want them a little bigger but you get up around three inches and it's more like a weight belt than a belt that you wear uh, so I cut out uh, that holster loop the holster slot put the holster in and other than edging and dying pretty close to done on that main portion of the belt. Now we're going to do the trouser belt portion, the part that actually buckles together. These are going to stitch and kind of be applique onto that main belt portion. I have templates for the belt loops and also the buckle end. Similar to when I did the, uh, the cartridge loops, if you get templates, you spend a lot less time measuring out and calculating and how far do you want to go and what are you going to do. And, it's just a lot easier to have these templates uh, to figure out where you're doing, going. It saves all that time on the measuring end. That was the hold portion of the belt. Now we're going to work on the buckle portion at the other end. Again, another template. Works great. Figure out where everything's going. Cut the slot for the buckle. And I'm going to measure out where the holes are going to go for the screws. I put two keepers on. Uh, typically, I put two keepers on for the belt. If I got a really big guy, I might put more keepers on on a really big belt. But for the most part, two keepers do the trick. So I'm going to take them over. I'm going to put the stitching uh, edge on each one of those. Again, this keeps them more firm. On the Ranger belt, I only do a single weight on the belt, the fastening portion of the belt. I do a single weight. If you start doing everything double thick on these Ranger belts, they get very thick uh, before you're done. Almost unwieldy. I used to do double thickness on the 8-9 ounce leather on the main portion of the belt. And again, that's more like livestock tack than a belt. 
The stitching helps maintain the integrity, keeps those from stretching out uh, when you wear them. And they work, they work great in that front. Now I have a smaller scallop and a much smaller floret that I do for the trouser belt portion, the fastener portion of the Ranger belt. So I'm gonna put those florets in, I'm sorry, the scallops in, and then the floret's gonna come next. And you can kind of see it when it's sped up like this, but you really get into a groove uh, working your way down there. Again, like I said on a previous uh, video, um, it, it almost becomes zen like that you're sort of just settling in, putting these stampings on, putting the, uh, the holes in, the scallops in, the florets, and just sort of settle in and work through it. And hopefully it makes it a little more consistent. And boy, they look nice when they're done. Give a lot of depth and character uh, to something that is normally a fairly plain portion of the belt. That blank, that plain end on the end, both this one and on the buckle portion, that's where it's going to get stitched onto the Ranger belt. Got the holes marked. Put oval holes in. Same size as a regular belt. We're going to use the same buckle as a regular trouser belt or gun belt. I'm going to put the first three holes in. And then the next hole I'm going to put in. Trim this up so i got room to work with it. And then in the meantime, what I did was I measured out those holes by putting screws in and actually uh, mating those up with the existing holes time to start edging uh, those have been burnished already I kind of skipped over that portion of the burnishing but put the edge coat on let that dry and we're kind of getting to the home stretch here about three quarters of the way through this project when I'm holding these not so much the first side that I do but when I get around to the other side, because I'm holding the side that has already been edge coated, I have to sort of hold it with my fingertips because I don't want to grab that. And I think you'll see in a second here, I sort of shake my yeah, shake my fingers out because my fingertips are going numb uh, from holding. That's just part of the process. I get that taken care of. Now we're gonna do the same thing with. The ranger portion of the belt the main body of the belt and you get a look at my forearms here because the cameraman's a tripod we'll work through fortunately we're going quick right get that trimmed up front and back even that kip skin uh, gets edged up it goes pretty good you got nice sharp tools if you got sharp edgers That'll work. You'll see here I try to prop it up against one of those clicker boards. And it still doesn't want to stay put. So I put the other clicker board on because I gotta work over top of those cartridge loops that are existing. Put that on, goes pretty well. All of this went pretty smoothly. So get it edged now. I bring out the slicking bar on the drill press. That slicking bar was custom made by a friend of mine, actually a guy that he works with owed him a favor. Uh, at the shop where he works and he cut one of those on the CNC and says you want another one my buddy says I think you only need one of those he says I just got to push the button so he pushed the button made another slicking bar so I have an extra that speeds things up and now we got that all burnished up everything is burnished finished putting the edge coat on the main portion of the belt and after that gets done we're on to assembly I do assemble all the parts together before I start dyeing. The last thing I'm going to do is dye and put a finished coat on this belt. I'm coming along. This also gets, I won't say tedious, but that gets to be a bit of a long process. So we're going to cut ahead 
Partway through the dyeing process, I have a table. As you can see, I have uh, paper. This is actually the paper that the leather comes in. I use it as a kind of a drop cloth. The dyeing can be a long process, not because there's a lot to cover, but that you have to cover it a lot. Um, you want to get that leather, I don't say saturated, but you want to put several coats on because they, they uh, soak in. And you'll see where I put dye on not just the main portion, but the back side of the trouser belt, the back side of what's going to get buckled up. It starts to soak in what we call flashing. Right, it looks nice and wet, nice and heavy, and then give it a couple seconds. And as that dye soaks in, it soaks in uh, somewhat unevenly to start with, but if you saturate it enough, again, you don't want to dip it. I don't dip dye anything, but you want to get enough dye on there that that color gets pretty consistent. As we wrap up the video, which is coming up here, we're going to end up here on the dyeing table. Um, get all that on. I got some sheepskin to put on higher quantities, um, but that turns out really nice. But it does take a little while to get enough dye on there. So there you have it. Comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see. We're going to get a holster going next, and then uh, we'll finish up a couple other projects. So hit the button. And I'll see you next time.